Jewish history is the history of the Jews, and their religion and culture, as it developed and interacted with other peoples, religions and cultures. Although Judaism as a religion first appears in Greek records during the Hellenistic period 323 BCE to 31 BCE and the earliest mention of Israel is inscribed on the Merneptah stele dated 1213–1203 BCE, religious literature tells the story of Israelites going back at least as far as c. 1500 BCE. The Jewish diaspora began with the Assyrian captivity and continued on a much larger scale with the Babylonian captivity. Jews were also widespread throughout the Roman Empire, and this carried on to a lesser extent in the period of Byzantine rule in the central and eastern Mediterranean. In 638 CE the Byzantine Empire lost control of the Levant. The Arab Islamic Empire under Caliph Omar conquered Jerusalem and the lands of Mesopotamia, Syria, Palestine and Egypt. The Golden Age of Jewish culture in Spain coincided with the Middle Ages in Europe, a period of Muslim rule throughout much of the Iberian Peninsula. During that time, Jews were generally accepted in society and Jewish religious, cultural, and economic life blossomed. During the Classical Ottoman period 1300 the Jews, together with most other communities of the empire, enjoyed a certain level of prosperity. In the 17th century, there were many significant Jewish populations in Western Europe. During the period of the European Renaissance and Enlightenment, significant changes occurred within the Jewish community. Jews began in the 18th century to campaign for emancipation from restrictive laws and integration into the wider European society. During the 1870s and 1880s the Jewish population in Europe began to more actively discuss emigration back to Israel and the re-establishment of the Jewish nation in its national homeland. The Zionist movement was founded officially in 1897. Meanwhile, the Jews of Europe and the United States gained success in the fields of science, culture and the economy. Among those generally considered the most famous were scientist Albert Einstein and philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein. A large number of Nobel Prize winners at this time were Jewish, as is still the case. In 1933, with the rise to power of Adolf Hitler and the Nazis in Germany, the Jewish situation became more severe. Economic crises, racial anti Semitic laws, and a fear of an upcoming war led many Jews to flee from Europe to Palestine, to the United States, and to the Soviet Union. In 1939 World War II began and until 1941 Hitler occupied almost all of Europe, including Poland—where millions of Jews were living at that time—and France. In 1941, following the invasion of the Soviet Union, the final solution began, an extensive organized operation on an unprecedented scale, aimed at the annihilation of the Jewish people, and resulting in the persecution and murder of Jews in political Europe, inclusive of European North Africa pro-Nazi Vichy North Africa and Italian Libya. This genocide, in which approximately six million Jews were methodically exterminated, is known as the Holocaust or Shoah Hebrew term. In Poland, three million Jews were killed in gas chambers in all concentration camps combined, with one million at the Auschwitz concentration camp alone. In 1945 the Jewish resistance organizations in Palestine unified and established the Jewish resistance movement, which attacked the British authorities. David Ben-Gurion proclaimed on May 14, 1948, the establishment of a Jewish state in Eretz Israel to be known as the State of Israel. Immediately afterwards all neighboring Arab states attacked, yet the newly formed IDF resisted. In 1949 the war ended and the State of Israel started building the state and absorbing massive waves of hundreds of thousands of Jews from all over the world. Today, 2018, Israel is a parliamentary democracy with a population of over 8 million people, of whom about 6 million are Jewish. The largest Jewish communities are in Israel and the United States, with major communities in France, Argentina, Russia, United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, and Germany. For statistics related to modern Jewish demographics see Jewish population. Time periods in Jewish history Topic. 
The history of the Jews and Judaism can be divided into five periods, 1 ancient Israel before Judaism, from the beginnings to 586 BCE, 2 the beginning of Judaism in the 6th and 5th centuries BCE, 3 the formation of Rabbinic Judaism after the destruction of the Second Temple in 70 CE, 4 the age of Rabbinic Judaism, from the ascension of Christianity to political power under the Emperor Constantine the Great in 312 CE to the end of the political hegemony of Christianity in the 18th century, and 5. The age of diverse Judaisms, from the French and American revolutions to the present. <inaudible> Ancient Jewish history c. 1500 BCE to 63 BCE. <inaudible> Ancient Israelites until c. 586 BCE. The history of the early Jews, and their neighbors, centers on the Fertile Crescent and east coast of the Mediterranean Sea. It begins among those people who occupied the area lying between the River Nile and Mesopotamia. Surrounded by ancient seats of culture in Egypt and Babylonia, by the deserts of Arabia, and by the highlands of Asia Minor, the land of Canaan roughly corresponding to modern Israel, the Palestinian territories, Jordan and Lebanon was a meeting place of civilizations. According to the Hebrew Bible, Jews descend from the ancient people of Israel who settled in the land of Canaan between the eastern coast of the Mediterranean Sea and the Jordan River. The Hebrew Bible refers to the children of Israel as Israelite descendants of a common ancestor Jacob. It also suggests that the nomadic travels of the Hebrews centered on Hebron in the first centuries of the second millennium BCE, leading to the establishment of the Cave of the Patriarchs as their burial site in Hebron. The children of Israel, in this account, consisted of twelve tribes, each descended from one of Jacob's twelve sons, Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Yisachar, Zebulun, Dan, Gad, Naphtali, Asher, Yosef, and Benjamin. The book of Genesis, chapters 25-50, tells the story of Jacob and his twelve sons, who left Canaan during a severe famine and settled in Goshen of northern Egypt. The Egyptian pharaonic government allegedly enslaved their descendants, although there is no independent evidence of this having occurred. After some 400 years of slavery, YHWH, the God of Israel, sent the Hebrew prophet Moses of the tribe of Levi to release the Israelites from bondage. According to the Bible, the Hebrews miraculously emigrated out of Egypt an event known as the Exodus, and returned to their ancestral homeland in Canaan. According to the Bible, after their emancipation from Egyptian slavery, the people of Israel wandered around and lived in the Sinai Desert for a span of 40 years before conquering Canaan in 1400 BCE under the command of Joshua. While living in the desert, according to the biblical writings, the nation of Israel received the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai from YHWH via Moses. After entering Canaan, portions of the land were given to each of the twelve tribes of Israel. However, archaeology reveals a different story of the origins of the Jewish people, they did not necessarily leave the Levant. The archaeological evidence of the largely indigenous origins of Israel in Canaan, not Egypt, is overwhelming, and leaves no room for an exodus from Egypt or a 40-year pilgrimage through the Sinai wilderness. Many archaeologists have abandoned the archaeological investigation of Moses and the Exodus as a fruitless pursuit. A century of research by archaeologists and Egyptologists has arguably found no evidence that can be directly related to the Exodus narrative of an Egyptian captivity and the escape and travels through the wilderness, leading to the suggestion that Iron Age Israel—the kingdoms of Judah and Israel— has its origins in Canaan, not in Egypt. The culture of the earliest Israelite settlements is Canaanite, their cult objects are those of the Canaanite god El, the pottery remains in the local Canaanite tradition, and the alphabet used is early Canaanite. Almost the sole marker distinguishing the Israelite villages from Canaanite sites is an absence of pig bones, although whether this can be taken as an ethnic marker or is due to other factors remains a matter of dispute. For several hundred years, the land of Israel was organized into a confederacy of twelve tribes ruled by a series of judges. After that came the Israelite monarchy, established in 1000 BCE under Saul, and continued under King David and his son, Solomon. During the reign of David, the already existing city of Jerusalem became the national and spiritual capital of the United Kingdom of Israel and Judah. Solomon built the first temple on Mount Moriah in Jerusalem. However, the tribes were fracturing politically. 
Upon his death, a civil war erupted between the ten northern Israelite tribes, and the tribes of Judah Simeon was absorbed into Judah and Benjamin in the south. The nation split into the kingdom of Israel in the north, and the kingdom of Judah in the south. The Assyrian ruler Tiglath-Pileser III conquered the northern kingdom of Israel in the 8th century BCE. No commonly accepted historical record accounts for the ultimate fate of the ten northern tribes, sometimes referred to as the ten lost tribes of Israel, although speculation abounds. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Babylonian captivity, c. 587–538 BCE. Topic. After revolting against the new dominant power and an ensuing siege, the Kingdom of Judah was conquered by the Babylonian army in 587 BCE and the first temple was destroyed. The elite of the kingdom and many of their people were exiled to Babylon, where the religion developed outside their traditional temple. Others fled to Egypt. After the fall of Jerusalem, Babylonia modern-day Iraq, would become the focus of Judaism for more than a thousand years. The first Judahite communities in Babylonia started with the exile of the tribe of Judah to Babylon by Jehoiakim in 597 BCE as well as after the destruction of the Temple in Jerusalem in 586 BCE. Babylonia, where some of the largest and most prominent Jewish cities and communities were established, became the center of Jewish life all the way up to the 13th century. By the first century, Babylonia already held a speedily growing population of an estimated 1 million Judahites which increased to an estimated 2 million between the years 200 CE and 500 CE, both by natural growth and by immigration of more Jews from the land of Israel, making up about one-sixth of the world Jewish population at that era. It was there that they would write the Babylonian Talmud in the languages used by the Jews of ancient Babylonia—Hebrew and Aramaic. The Jews established Talmudic academies in Babylonia, also known as the Geonic Academies, which became the center for Jewish scholarship and the development of Jewish law in Babylonia from roughly 500 CE to 1038 CE. The two most famous academies were the Pumbedita Academy and the Sura Academy. Major yeshiva were also located at Nahardia and Mahusa. After a few generations and with the conquest of Babylonia in 540 BC by the Persian Empire, some adherents led by prophets Ezra and Nehemiah, returned to their homeland and traditional practices. Other Judeans did not permanently return and remained in exile and developed somewhat independently outside of the land of Israel, especially following the Muslim conquests of the Middle East in the 7th century CE. Early trade with ancient India c. 562 BCE to 70 CE. Topic. According to tradition, traders from Judea arrived in what now the city of Kochi, Cochin, in India in 562 BCE, and more Judeans came as exiles in 70 CE after the destruction of the Second Temple. Topic. Post-exilic period, c. 538-332 BCE. Topic. Following their return to Jerusalem after the return from the exile, and with Persian approval and financing, construction of the Second Temple was completed in 516 BCE under the leadership of the last three Jewish prophets Haggai, Zechariah and Malachi. After the death of the last Jewish prophet and while still under Persian rule, the leadership of the Jewish people passed into the hands of five successive generations of Zugo, pairs of leaders. They flourished first under the Persians and then under the Greeks. As a result, the Pharisees and Sadducees were formed. Under the Persians then under the Greeks, Jewish coins were minted in Judea as Yehud coinage. Topic. Hellenistic period c. 332-110 BCE Topic. In 332 BCE, the Persians were defeated by Alexander the Great of Macedon. After his demise, and the division of Alexander's empire among his generals, the Seleucid kingdom was formed. Greek culture was spread eastwards by the Alexandrian conquests. The Levant was not immune to this cultural spread. During this time, currents of Judaism were influenced by Hellenistic philosophy developed from the 3rd century BCE, notably the Jewish diaspora in Alexandria, culminating in the compilation of the Septuagint. An important advocate of the symbiosis of Jewish theology and Hellenistic thought is Philo. 
Topic: The Hasmonean Kingdom 110 to 63 BCE. Topic: a deterioration of relations between Hellenized Jews and Orthodox Jews led the Seleucid king Antiochus IV Epiphanes to impose decrees banning certain Jewish religious rites and traditions. Consequently, the Orthodox Jews revolted under the leadership of the Hasmonean family also known as the Maccabees. This revolt eventually led to the formation of an independent Jewish kingdom, known as the Hasmonean dynasty, which lasted from 165 BCE to 63 BCE. The Hasmonean dynasty eventually disintegrated as a result of civil war between the sons of Salome Alexandra, Hyrcanus II and Aristobulus II. The people, who did not want to be governed by a king but by theocratic clergy, made appeals in this spirit to the Roman authorities. A Roman campaign of conquest and annexation, led by Pompey, soon followed. Roman rule in the land of Israel 63 BCE to 324 CE Topic Judea had been an independent Jewish kingdom under the Hasmoneans but was conquered by the Roman general Pompey in 63 BCE and reorganized as a client state Roman expansion was going on in other areas as well and would continue for more than 150 years Later Herod the Great was appointed King of the Jews, by the Roman Senate, supplanting the Hasmonean dynasty. Some of his offspring held various positions after him, known as the Herodian dynasty. Briefly, from 4 BCE to 6 CE, Herod Archelaus ruled the Tetrarchy of Judea as ethnarch, the Romans denying him the title of king. After the census of Quirinius in 6 CE, the Roman province of Judea was formed as a satellite of Roman Syria under the rule of a prefect as was Roman Egypt until 41 CE, then procurators after 44 CE. The empire was often callous and brutal in its treatment of its Jewish subjects, see anti-Judaism in the pre-Christian Roman Empire. In 30 CE or 33 CE, Jesus of Nazareth, an itinerant rabbi from Galilee, and the central figure of Christianity, was put to death by crucifixion in Jerusalem under the Roman prefect of Judea, Pontius Pilate. In 66 CE, the Jews began to revolt against the Roman rulers of Judea. The revolt was defeated by the future Roman emperors Vespasian and Titus. In the siege of Jerusalem in 70 CE, the Romans destroyed the temple in Jerusalem and, according to some accounts, plundered artifacts from the temple, such as the menorah. Jews continued to live in their land in significant numbers, the Quito's War of 115–117 CE notwithstanding, until Julius Severus ravaged Judea while putting down the Bar Kokhba revolt of 132–136 CE. 985 villages were destroyed and most of the Jewish population of central Judea was essentially wiped out, killed, sold into slavery, or forced to flee. Banished from Jerusalem, except for the day of Tisha B. Avenue, the Jewish population now centered on Galilee and initially in Yavna. Jerusalem was renamed Elah Capitolina and Judea was renamed Syria Palestina, to spite the Jews by naming it after their ancient enemies, the Philistines. Jews were only allowed to visit Ela Capitolina on the day of Tisha B. Avenue. Topic: The Diaspora. Topic: The Jewish diaspora began with the Assyrian conquest and continued on a much larger scale with the Babylonian conquest, in which the tribe of Judah was exiled to Babylonia along with the dethroned king of Judah, Jehoiakim, in the 6th century BCE, and was taken into captivity in 597 BCE. The exile continued after the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem in 586 BCE. Many more Jews migrated to Babylon in 135 CE after the Bar Kokhba revolt and in the centuries after, many of the Judean Jews were sold into slavery while others became citizens of other parts of the Roman Empire. The Book of Acts in the New Testament, as well as other Pauline texts, make frequent reference to the large populations of Hellenized Jews in the cities of the Roman world. These Hellenized Jews were affected by the diaspora only in its spiritual sense, absorbing the feeling of loss and homelessness that became a cornerstone of the Jewish creed, much supported by persecutions in various parts of the world. The policy encouraging proselytism and conversion to Judaism, which spread the Jewish religion throughout the Hellenistic civilization, seems to have subsided with the wars against the Romans. 
of critical importance to the reshaping of Jewish tradition from the temple-based religion to the rabbinic traditions of the diaspora, was the development of the interpretations of the Torah found in the Mishnah and Talmud. Late Roman period in the land of Israel The relations of the Jews with the Roman Empire in the region continued to be complicated. Constantine I allowed Jews to mourn their defeat and humiliation once a year on Tisha B'Av at the Western Wall. In 351–352 CE, the Jews of Galilee launched yet another revolt, provoking heavy retribution. The Gallus Revolt came during the rising influence of early Christians in the Eastern Roman Empire, under the Constantinian dynasty. In 355, however, the relations with the Roman rulers improved, upon the rise of Emperor Julian, the last of the Constantinian dynasty, who unlike his predecessors defied Christianity. In 363, not long before Julian left Antioch to launch his campaign against Sasanian Persia, in keeping with his effort to foster religions other than Christianity, he ordered the Jewish temple rebuilt. The failure to rebuild the temple has mostly been ascribed to the dramatic Galilee earthquake of 363 and traditionally also to the Jews' ambivalence about the project. Sabotage is a possibility, as is an accidental fire. Divine intervention was the common view among Christian historians of the time. Julian's support of Jews caused Jews to call him Julian the Hellene. Julian's fatal wound in the Persian campaign and his consequent death had put an end to Jewish aspirations, and Julian's successors embraced Christianity through the entire timeline of Byzantine rule of Jerusalem, preventing any Jewish claims. In 438 CE, when the Empress Eudocha removed the ban on Jews, "...praying at the temple site, the heads of the community in Galilee issued a call to the great and mighty people of the Jews which began, know that the end of the exile of our people has come. However, the Christian population of the city, who saw this as a threat to their primacy, didn." T allow it and a riot erupted after which they chased away the Jews from the city. During the 5th and the 6th centuries, a series of Samaritan insurrections broke out across the Palestina Prima province. Especially violent were the 3rd and the 4th revolts, which resulted in almost the entire annihilation of the Samaritan community. It is likely that the Samaritan revolt of 556 was joined by the Jewish community, which had also suffered a brutal suppression of Israelite religion. In the belief of restoration to come, in the early 7th century the Jews made an alliance with the Persians, who invaded Palestina Prima in 614, fought at their side, overwhelmed the Byzantine garrison in Jerusalem, and were given Jerusalem to be governed as an autonomy. However, their autonomy was brief, the Jewish leader in Jerusalem was shortly assassinated during a Christian revolt and though Jerusalem was reconquered by Persians and Jews within three weeks, it fell into anarchy. With the consequent withdrawal of Persian forces, Jews surrendered to Byzantines in 625 or 628 CE, but were massacred by Christian radicals in 629 CE, with the survivors fleeing to Egypt. The Byzantine Eastern Roman Empire control of the region was finally lost to the Muslim Arab armies in 637 CE, when Umar ibn al-Khattab completed the conquest of Akko. Topic: <laughs> Middle Ages. Topic. Topic. Jews of Babylonia 219-1250 CE Topic. After the fall of Jerusalem, Babylonia modern-day Iraq, would become the focus of Judaism for more than a thousand years. The first Jewish communities in Babylonia started with the exile of the tribe of Judah to Babylon by Jehoiakim in 597 BCE as well as after the destruction of the Temple in Jerusalem in 586 BCE. Many more Jews migrated to Babylon in 135 CE after the Bar Kokhba revolt and in the centuries after. Babylonia, where some of the largest and most prominent Jewish cities and communities were established, became the center of Jewish life all the way up to the 13th century. By the first century, Babylonia already held a speedily growing population of an estimated 1 million Jews, which increased to an estimated 2 million between the years 200 CE and 500 CE, both by natural growth and by immigration of more Jews from the land of Israel, making up about one-sixth of the world Jewish population at that era. 
It was there that they would write the Babylonian Talmud in the languages used by the Jews of ancient Babylonia, Hebrew and Aramaic. The Jews established Talmudic academies in Babylonia, also known as the Geonic Academies, Geonim, meaning splendor, in Biblical Hebrew or geniuses, which became the center for Jewish scholarship and the development of Jewish law in Babylonia from roughly 500 CE to 1038 CE. The two most famous academies were the Pumbedita Academy and the Sura Academy. Major yeshiva were also located at Nahardia and Mahusa. The Talmudic yeshiva academies became a main part of Jewish culture and education, and Jews continued on establishing yeshiva academies in Western and Eastern Europe, North Africa, and in the centuries later on to America and other countries around the world where Jews lived in the diaspora. Talmudic study in yeshiva academies continue today with the establishment of a large number of yeshiva academies, most of them located in the United States and Israel. These Talmudic yeshiva academies of Babylonia followed the era of the Amoraim, expounders. The sages of the Talmud who were active both in the land of Israel and in Babylon during the end of the era of the sealing of the Mishnah and until the times of the sealing of the Talmud 220 CE to 500 CE and following the Savoraim, reasoners. The sages of Beth Midrash Torah study places in Babylon from the end of the era of the Amoraim 5th century and until the beginning of the era of the Geonim. The Geonim Hebrew, Gwinim were the presidents of the two great rabbinical colleges of Sura and Pumbedita, and were the generally accepted spiritual leaders of the worldwide Jewish community in the early medieval era, in contrast to the Resh Galuta who wielded secular authority over the Jews in Islamic lands. According to traditions, the Resh Galuta were descendants of Judean kings, which is why the kings of Parthia would treat them with much honor. For the Jews of late antiquity and the early Middle Ages, the yeshivo of Babylonia served much the same function as the ancient Sanhedrin. That is, as a council of Jewish religious authorities. The academies were founded in pre Islamic Babylonia under the Zoroastrian Sassanid dynasty and were located not far from the Sassanid capital of Cte Siphon, which at that time was the largest city in the world. After the conquest of Persia in the 7th century, the academies subsequently operated for 400 years under the Islamic Caliphate. The first gown of Sura, according to Sharira Gown, was Mar Bar Rab Chanan, who assumed office in 609. The last gown of Sura was Samuel ben Hafni, who died in 1034. The last gown of Pumbedita was Hezekiah Gown, who was tortured to death in 1040, hence, the activity of the Geonim covers a period of nearly 450 years. One of principal seats of Babylonian Judaism was Nahardia, which was then a very large city made up mostly of Jews. A very ancient synagogue, built, it was believed, by King Jehoiakim, existed in Nahardia. At Huzal, near Nahardia, there was another synagogue, not far from which could be seen the ruins of Ezra's academy. In the period before Hadrian, Akiba, on his arrival at Nahardia on a mission from the Sanhedrin, entered into a discussion with a resident scholar on a point of matrimonial law Mishnah Yeb, end. At the same time there was at Nisibis northern Mesopotamia, an excelling Jewish college, at the head of which stood Judah ben Bathira, and in which many Judean scholars found refuge at the time of the persecutions. A certain temporary importance was also attained by a school at Neher Pekid, founded by the Judean immigrant Ananiah, nephew of Joshua ben Ananiah, which school might have been the cause of a schism between the Jews of Babylonia and those of Judea Israel, had not the Judean authorities promptly checked Ananiah's ambition. <laughs> Byzantine period 324 Jews were also widespread throughout the Roman Empire, and this carried on to a lesser extent in the period of Byzantine rule in the central and eastern Mediterranean. The militant and exclusive Christianity and Caesaropapism of the Byzantine Empire did not treat Jews well, and the condition and influence of diaspora Jews in the empire declined dramatically. It was official Christian policy to convert Jews to Christianity, and the Christian leadership used the official power of Rome in their attempts. In 351 CE the Jews revolted against the added pressures of their governor, Constantius Gallus. Gallus put down the revolt and destroyed the major cities in the Galilee area where the revolt had started. Tizipori and Lydda site of two of the major legal academies never recovered. In this period, the NASI in Tiberias, Hillel II, created an official calendar, which needed no monthly sightings of the moon. 
The months were set, and the calendar needed no further authority from Judea. At about the same time, the Jewish Academy at Tiberias began to collate the combined Mishnah, Breitat, explanations, and interpretations developed by generations of scholars who studied after the death of Judah Hanasi. The text was organized according to the order of the Mishnah. Each paragraph of Mishnah was followed by a compilation of all of the interpretations, stories, and responses associated with that Mishnah. This text is called the Jerusalem Talmud. The Jews of Judea received a brief respite from official persecution during the rule of the Emperor Julian the Apostate. Julian's policy was to return the kingdom to Hellenism and he encouraged the Jews to rebuild Jerusalem. As Julian S. rule lasted briefly from 361 to 363, the Jews could not rebuild sufficiently before Roman Christian rule was restored over the empire. Beginning in 398 with the consecration of St. John Chrysostom as Patriarch, the Christian rhetoric against Jews continued to rise. He preached sermons with titles such as, Against the Jews, and On the Statues, Homily 17, in which John preaches against the Jewish sickness. Such heated language contributed to a climate of Christian distrust and hate toward the large Jewish settlements, such as those in Antioch and Constantinople. In the beginning of the 5th century, the Emperor Theodosius issued a set of decrees establishing official persecution against Jews. Jews were not allowed to own slaves, build new synagogues, hold public office or try cases between a Jew and a non-Jew. Intermarriage between Jew and non-Jew was made a capital offense, as was a Christian converting to Judaism. Theodosius did away with the Sanhedrin and abolished the post of Nasi. Under the Emperor Justinian, the authorities further restricted the civil rights of Jews, and threatened their religious privileges. The emperor interfered in the internal affairs of the synagogue, and forbade, for instance, the use of the Hebrew language in divine worship. Those who disobeyed the restrictions were threatened with corporal penalties, exile, and loss of property. The Jews at Borium, not far from Certus Major, who resisted the Byzantine general Belisarius in his campaign against the Vandals, were forced to embrace Christianity, and their synagogue was converted to a church. Justinian and his successors had concerns outside the province of Judea, and he had insufficient troops to enforce these regulations. As a result, the 5th century was a period when a wave of new synagogues were built, many with beautiful mosaic floors. Jews adopted the rich art forms of the Byzantine culture. Jewish mosaics of the period portray people, animals, menorahs, zodiacs, and biblical characters. Excellent examples of these synagogue floors have been found at Beit Alpha which includes the scene of Abraham sacrificing a ram instead of his son Isaac along with a zodiac, Tiberius, Beit Sheen, and Tizipori. The precarious existence of Jews under Byzantine rule did not long endure, largely for the explosion of the Muslim religion out of the remote Arabian Peninsula where large populations of Jews resided. See History of the Jews under Muslim rule for more. The Muslim Caliphate ejected the Byzantines from the Holy Land or the Levant, defined as modern Israel, Jordan, Lebanon and Syria within a few years of their victory at the Battle of Yarmouk in 636. Numerous Jews fled the remaining Byzantine territories in favor of residence in the Caliphate over the subsequent centuries. The size of the Jewish community in the Byzantine Empire was not affected by attempts by some emperors most notably Justinian to forcibly convert the Jews of Anatolia to Christianity, as these attempts met with very little success. Historians continue to research the status of the Jews in Asian Minor during the Byzantine rule. For a sample of views, see, for instance, J. Star The Jews in the Byzantine Empire, 641-1204, S. Bowman, The Jews of Byzantium, R. Jenkins Byzantium, Averill Cameron. Byzantines and Jews, recent work on early Byzantium. Byzantine and Modern Greek Studies 20, 1996. No systematic persecution of the type endemic at that time in Western Europe pogroms, the stake, mass expulsions, etc. has been recorded in Byzantium. Much of the Jewish population of Constantinople remained in place after the conquest of the city by Mehmet II. Perhaps in the 4th century, the Kingdom of Semin, a Jewish nation in modern Ethiopia was established, lasting until the 17th century. Islamic period 638 In 638 CE the Byzantine Empire lost control of the Levant. 
The Arab Islamic Empire under Caliph Omar conquered Jerusalem and the lands of Mesopotamia, Syria, Palestine and Egypt. As a political system, Islam created radically new conditions for Jewish economic, social, and intellectual development. Caliph Omar permitted the Jews to re-establish their presence in Jerusalem after a lapse of 500 years. Jewish tradition regards Caliph Omar as a benevolent ruler and the Midrash de Rav Shimon bar Yohai refers to him as a friend of Israel. According to the Arab geographer al muqaddasa the Jews worked as the assayers of coins, the dyers, the tanners and the bankers in the community. During the Fatimid period, many Jewish officials served in the regime. Professor Moshe Gill documents that at the time of the Arab conquest in the 7th century CE, the majority of the population was Jewish. During this time, Jews lived in thriving communities all across ancient Babylonia. In the Geonic period, CE, the Babylonian yeshiva academies were the chief centers of Jewish learning, the geonim meaning either splendor or geniuses, who were the heads of these schools, were recognized as the highest authorities in Jewish law. Topic. Jewish Golden Age in Early Muslim Spain Topic. The Golden Age of Jewish culture in Spain coincided with the Middle Ages in Europe, a period of Muslim rule throughout much of the Iberian Peninsula. During that time, Jews were generally accepted in society and Jewish religious, cultural, and economic life blossomed. A period of tolerance thus dawned for the Jews of the Iberian Peninsula, whose number was considerably augmented by immigration from Africa in the wake of the Muslim conquest. Especially after 912, during the reign of Abd ar Rahman III and his son, al Hakam II, the Jews prospered, devoting themselves to the service of the Caliphate of Cordoba, to the study of the sciences, and to commerce and industry, especially to trading in silk and slaves, in this way promoting the prosperity of the country. Jewish economic expansion was unparalleled. In Toledo, Jews were involved in translating Arabic texts to the Romance languages, as well as translating Greek and Hebrew texts into Arabic. Jews also contributed to botany, geography, medicine, mathematics, poetry and philosophy. Generally, the Jewish people were allowed to practice their religion and live according to the laws and scriptures of their community. Furthermore, the restrictions to which they were subject were social and symbolic rather than tangible and practical in character. That is to say, these regulations served to define the relationship between the two communities, and not to oppress the Jewish population. Abd al-Rahman's court physician and minister was Hasdeh ben Isaac ibn Shaprit, the patron of Menahem ben Saruk, Dunash ben Labrat, and other Jewish scholars and poets. Jewish thought during this period flourished under famous figures such as Samuel ha Najid, Moses ibn Ezra, Solomon ibn Gabriel Judah Halevi and Moses Maimonides. During Abd al-Rahman's term of power, the scholar Moses ben Enoch was appointed rabbi of Córdoba, and as a consequence Al-Andalus became the center of Talmudic study, and Córdoba the meeting place of Jewish savants. The Golden Age ended with the invasion of Al-Andalus by the Almohades, a conservative dynasty originating in North Africa, who were highly intolerant of religious minorities. Topic: <laughs> Crusaders period 1099 to 1260. Topic: Sermonical messages to avenge the death of Jesus encouraged Christians to participate in the crusades. The 12th century Jewish narration from R. Solomon ben Samson records that crusaders en route to the Holy Land decided that before combating the Ishmaelites they would massacre the Jews residing in their midst to avenge the crucifixion of Christ. The massacres began at Rouen and Jewish communities in Rhine Valley were seriously affected. Crusading attacks were made upon Jews in the territory around Heidelberg. A huge loss of Jewish life took place. Many were forcibly converted to Christianity and many committed suicide to avoid baptism. A major driving factor behind the choice to commit suicide was the Jewish realization that upon being slain their children could be taken to be raised as Christians. The Jews were living in the middle of Christian lands and felt this danger acutely. This massacre is seen as the first in a sequence of anti-Semitic events which culminated in the Holocaust. Jewish populations felt that they had been abandoned by their Christian neighbors and rulers during the massacres and lost faith in all promises and charters. Many Jews chose self-defense. 
but their means of self-defense were limited and their casualties only increased. Most of the forced conversions proved ineffective. Many Jews reverted to their original faith later. The Pope protested this but Emperor Henry IV agreed to permitting these reversions. The massacres began a new epic for Jewry in Christendom. The Jews had preserved their faith from social pressure, now they had to preserve it at sword point. The massacres during the Crusades strengthened the Jewry from within spiritually. The Jewish perspective was that their struggle was Israel's struggle to hallow the name of God. In 1099, Jews helped the Arabs to defend Jerusalem against the Crusaders. When the city fell, the Crusaders gathered many Jews in a synagogue and set it on fire. In Haifa, the Jews almost single handedly defended the town against the Crusaders, holding out for a month, June to July 1099. At this time there were Jewish communities scattered all over the country, including Jerusalem, Tiberias, Ramla, Ashkelon, Caesarea, and Gaza. As Jews were not allowed to hold land during the Crusader period, they worked at trades and commerce in the coastal towns during times of quiescence. Most were artisans, glassblowers in Sidon, furriers and dyers in Jerusalem. During this period, the Masoretes of Tiberias established the Nikid, a system of diacritical signs used to represent vowels or distinguish between alternative pronunciations of letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Numerous piyutim and midrashim were recorded in Palestine at this time. Maimonides wrote that in 1165 he visited Jerusalem and went to the Temple Mount, where he prayed in the Great, Holy House. Maimonides established a yearly holiday for himself and his sons, the 6th of Heshvan, commemorating the day he went up to pray on the Temple Mount, and another, the 9th of Heshvan, commemorating the day he merited to pray at the Cave of the Patriarchs in Hebron. In 1141 Yehuda Halevi issued a call to Jews to emigrate to the land of Israel and took on the long journey himself. After a stormy passage from Cordoba, he arrived in Egyptian Alexandria, where he was enthusiastically greeted by friends and admirers. At Damietta, he had to struggle against his heart, and the pleadings of his friend Hafan Ha Levi, that he remain in Egypt, where he would be free from intolerant oppression. He started on the rough route overland. He was met along the way by Jews in Tyre and Damascus. Jewish legend relates that as he came near Jerusalem, overpowered by the sight of the holy city, he sang his most beautiful elegy, the celebrated Zionide, Zion Ha Lo Tishali. At that instant, an Arab had galloped out of a gate and rode him down. He was killed in the accident. Topic: <inaudible> Mamluk period (1260–1517). Topic: In the years 1260–1516, the land of Israel was part of the empire of the Mamluks, who ruled first from Turkey, then from Egypt. The period was characterized by war, uprisings, bloodshed and destruction. Jews suffered persecution and humiliation, but the surviving records note at least 30 Jewish urban and rural communities at the opening of the 16th century. Namanides is recorded as settling in the old city of Jerusalem in 1267. He moved to Acre, where he was active in spreading Jewish learning, which was at that time neglected in the Holy Land. He gathered a circle of pupils around him, and people came in crowds, even from the district of the Euphrates, to hear him. Karaites were said to have attended his lectures, among them Aaron ben Joseph the Elder. He later became one of the greatest Karaiti authorities. Shortly after Namanide's arrival in Jerusalem, he addressed a letter to his son Naman, in which he described the desolation of the holy city. At the time, it had only two Jewish inhabitants—two brothers, dyers by trade. In a later letter from Acre, Namanides counsels his son to cultivate humility, which he considers to be the first of virtues. In another, addressed to his second son, who occupied an official position at the Castilian court, Namanides recommends the recitation of the daily prayers and warns above all against immorality. Namanides died after reaching 76, and his remains were interred at Haifa, by the grave of Yeshiel of Paris. Yeshiel had emigrated to Acre in 1260, along with his son and a large group of followers. There he established the Tamadic Academy Midrash Hagadol de Paris. He is believed to have died there between 1265 and 1268. In 1488 Obadiah ben Abraham, commentator on the Mishnah, arrived in Jerusalem. This marked a new period of return for the Jewish community in the land. Spain, North Africa, and the Middle East Topic. During the Middle Ages, Jews were generally better treated by Islamic rulers than Christian ones. 
Despite second class citizenship, Jews played prominent roles in Muslim courts, and experienced a golden age in Moorish Spain about 900 1 100, though the situation deteriorated after that time. Riots resulting in the deaths of Jews did however occur in North Africa through the centuries and especially in Morocco, Libya and Algeria, where eventually Jews were forced to live in ghettos. During the 11th century, Muslims in Spain conducted pogroms against the Jews. Those occurred in Cordoba in 1011 and in Granada in 1066. During the Middle Ages, the governments of Egypt, Syria, Iraq and Yemen enacted decrees ordering the destruction of synagogues. At certain times, Jews were forced to convert to Islam or face death in some parts of Yemen, Morocco and Baghdad. The Almohads, who had taken control of much of Islamic Iberia by 1172, surpassed the Almoravides in fundamentalist outlook. They treated the Dhimmis harshly. They expelled both Jews and Christians from Morocco and Islamic Spain. Faced with the choice of death or conversion, many Jews emigrated. Some, such as the family of Maimonides, fled south and east to the more tolerant Muslim lands, while others went northward to settle in the growing Christian kingdoms. <laughs> Europe Topic. According to the American writer James Carroll, Jews accounted for 10% of the total population of the Roman Empire. By that ratio, if other factors had not intervened, there would be 200 million Jews in the world today, instead of something like 13 million. Jewish populations have existed in Europe, especially in the area of the former Roman Empire, from very early times. As Jewish males had emigrated, some sometimes took wives from local populations, as is shown by the various mtDNA, compared to yDNA among Jewish populations. These groups were joined by traders and later on by members of the diaspora. Records of Jewish communities in France, see History of the Jews in France and Germany, see History of the Jews in Germany date from the 4th century, and substantial Jewish communities in Spain were noted even earlier. The historian Norman Cantor and other 20th century scholars dispute the tradition that the Middle Ages was a uniformly difficult time for Jews. Before the church became fully organized as an institution with an increasing array of rules, early medieval society was tolerant. Between 800 and 1100, an estimated 1.5 million Jews lived in Christian Europe. As they were not Christians, they were not included as a division of the feudal system of clergy, knights and serfs. This means that they did not have to satisfy the oppressive demands for labor and military conscription that Christian commoners suffered. In relations with the Christian society, the Jews were protected by kings, princes and bishops, because of the crucial services they provided in three areas, finance, administration and medicine. The lack of political strengths did leave Jews vulnerable to exploitation through extreme taxation. Christian scholars interested in the Bible consulted with Talmudic rabbis. As the Roman Catholic Church strengthened as an institution, the Franciscan and Dominican preaching orders were founded, and there was a rise of competitive middle class, town dwelling Christians. By 1300, the friars and local priests staged the Passion Plays during Holy Week, which depicted Jews in contemporary dress killing Christ, according to Gospel accounts. From this period, persecution of Jews and deportations became endemic. Around 1500, Jews found relative security and a renewal of prosperity in present day Poland. After 1300, Jews suffered more discrimination and persecution in Christian Europe. Europe's Jewry was mainly urban and literate. The Christians were inclined to regard Jews as obstinate deniers of the truth because, in their view, the Jews were expected to know of the truth of the Christian doctrines from their knowledge of the Jewish scriptures. Jews were aware of the pressure to accept Christianity. As Catholics were forbidden by the Church to loan money for interest, some Jews became prominent moneylenders. Christian rulers gradually saw the advantage of having such a class of people who could supply capital for their use without being liable to excommunication. As a result, the money trade of Western Europe became a specialty of the Jews. But, in almost every instance when Jews acquired large amounts through banking transactions, during their lives or upon their deaths, the king would take it over. Jews became imperial, servi camere, the property of the king, who might present them and their possessions to princes or cities. Jews were frequently massacred and exiled from various European countries. The persecution hit its first peak during the Crusades. In the People's Crusade 1096, flourishing Jewish communities on the Rhine and the Danube were utterly destroyed. 
In the Second Crusade 1147, the Jews in France were subject to frequent massacres. They were also subjected to attacks by the shepherds. Crusades of 1251 and 1320. The Crusades were followed by massive expulsions, including in 1290 the banishing of all English Jews. In 1396, 100,000 Jews were expelled from France, and in 1421, thousands were expelled from Austria. Over this time, many Jews in Europe, either fleeing or being expelled, migrated to Poland, where they prospered into another golden age. Topic: <laughs> Early Modern Period. Topic. Historians who study modern Jewry have identified four different paths by which European Jews were «modernized» and thus integrated into the mainstream of European society. A common approach has been to view the process through the lens of the European Enlightenment as Jews faced the promise and the challenges posed by political emancipation. Scholars that use this approach have focused on two social types as paradigms for the decline of Jewish tradition and as agents of the sea changes in Jewish culture that led to the collapse of the ghetto. The first of these two social types is the court Jew who is portrayed as a forerunner of the modern Jew, having achieved integration with and participation in the proto-capitalist economy and court society of Central European states such as the Habsburg Empire. In contrast to the cosmopolitan court Jew, the second social type presented by historians of modern Jewry is the maskal, learned person, a proponent of the Haskala enlightenment. This narrative sees the maskal's pursuit of secular scholarship and his rationalistic critiques of rabbinic tradition as laying a durable intellectual foundation for the secularization of Jewish society and culture. The established paradigm has been one in which Ashkenazic Jews entered modernity through a self-conscious process of westernization led by highly atypical, Germanized Jewish intellectuals. Haskalah gave birth to the reform and conservative movements and planted the seeds of Zionism while at the same time encouraging cultural assimilation into the countries in which Jews resided. At around the same time that Haskalah was developing, Hasidic Judaism was spreading as a movement that preached a world view almost opposed to the Haskalah. In the 1990s, the concept of the Port Jew has been suggested as an alternate path to modernity that was distinct from the European Haskalah. In contrast to the focus on Ashkenazic Germanized Jews, the concept of the Port Jew focused on the Sephardi conversos who fled the Inquisition and resettled in European port towns on the coast of the Mediterranean, the Atlantic and the eastern seaboard of the United States. Topic. Court Jew Court Jews were Jewish bankers or businessmen who lent money and handled the finances of some of the Christian European noble houses. Corresponding historical terms are Jewish bailiff and shtadlin. Examples of what would be later called court Jews emerged when local rulers used services of Jewish bankers for short-term loans. They lent money to nobles and in the process gained social influence. Noble patrons of court Jews employed them as financiers, suppliers, diplomats and trade delegates. Court Jews could use their family connections, and connections between each other, to provision their sponsors with, among other things, food, arms, ammunition and precious metals. In return for their services, court Jews gained social privileges, including up to noble status for themselves, and could live outside the Jewish ghettos. Some nobles wanted to keep their bankers in their own courts. And because they were under noble protection, they were exempted from rabbinical jurisdiction. From medieval times, court Jews could amass personal fortunes and gain political and social influence. Sometimes they were also prominent people in the local Jewish community and could use their influence to protect and influence their brethren. Sometimes they were the only Jews who could interact with the local high society and present petitions of the Jews to the ruler. However, the court Jew had social connections and influence in the Christian world mainly through his Christian patrons. Due to the precarious position of Jews, some nobles could just ignore their debts. If the sponsoring noble died, his Jewish financier could face exile or execution. Topic: <laughs> Spain and Portugal. Topic: Significant repression of Spain. S numerous community occurred during the 14th century, notably a major pogrom in 1391 which resulted in the majority of Spain's 300,000 Jews converting to Catholicism. 
With the conquest of the Muslim Kingdom of Granada in 1492, the Catholic monarchs issued the Alhambra Decree whereby Spain's remaining 100,000 Jews were forced to choose between conversion and exile. As a result, an estimated 50,000 to 70,000 Jews left Spain, the remainder joining Spain's already numerous converso community. Perhaps a quarter of a million conversos thus were gradually absorbed by the dominant Catholic culture, although those among them who secretly practiced Judaism were subject to 40 years of intense repression by the Spanish Inquisition. This was particularly the case up until 1530, after which the trials of conversos by the Inquisition dropped to 3% of the total. Similar expulsions of Sephardic Jews occurred 1493 in Sicily 37,000 Jews and Portugal in 1496. The expelled Spanish Jews fled mainly to the Ottoman Empire and North Africa and Portugal. A small number also settled in Holland and England. Port Jew The Port Jew describes Jews who were involved in the seafaring and maritime economy of Europe, especially in the 17th and 18th centuries. Helen Fry suggests that they could be considered to have been the earliest modern Jews. According to Fry, Port Jews often arrived as refugees from the Inquisition and the expulsion of Jews from Iberia. They were allowed to settle in port cities as merchants granted permission to trade in ports such as Amsterdam, London, Trieste and Hamburg. Fry notes that their connections with the Jewish diaspora and their expertise in maritime trade made them of particular interest to the mercantilist governments of Europe. Lois Dubin describes port Jews as Jewish merchants who were "...valued for their engagement in the international maritime trade upon which such cities thrived." Sorkin and others have characterized the socio-cultural profile of these men as marked by a flexibility towards religion and a "...reluctant cosmopolitanism that was alien to both traditional and enlightened Jewish identities." Ottoman Empire. Topic. During the classical Ottoman period 1300 to 1600, the Jews, together with most other communities of the empire, enjoyed a certain level of prosperity. Compared with other Ottoman subjects, they were the predominant power in commerce and trade as well in diplomacy and other high offices. In the 16th century especially, the Jews were the most prominent under the millets. The apogee of Jewish influence could arguably be the appointment of Joseph Nasi to Sanjak Bey governor, a rank usually only bestowed upon Muslims of the island of Naxos. At the time of the Battle of Yarmouk when the Levant passed under Muslim rule, 30 Jewish communities existed in Haifa, Shicham, Hebron, Ramla, Gaza, Jerusalem, and many in the north. Safed became a spiritual center for the Jews and the Shulchan Aruch was compiled there as well as many Kabbalistic texts. The first Hebrew printing press, and the first printing in Western Asia began in 1577. Jews lived in the geographic area of Asia Minor modern Turkey, but more geographically either Anatolia or Asia Minor for more than 2,400 years. Initial prosperity in Hellenistic times had faded under Christian Byzantine rule, but recovered somewhat under the rule of the various Muslim governments that displaced and succeeded rule from Constantinople. For much of the Ottoman period, Turkey was a safe haven for Jews fleeing persecution, and it continues to have a small Jewish population today. The situation where Jews both enjoyed cultural and economical prosperity at times but were widely persecuted at other times was summarized by G.E. Von Grunbaum. It would not be difficult to put together the names of a very sizable number of Jewish subjects or citizens of the Islamic area who have attained to high rank, to power, to great financial influence, to significant and recognized intellectual attainment, and the same could be done for Christians. But it would again not be difficult to compile a lengthy list of persecutions, arbitrary confiscations, attempted forced conversions, or pogroms. Poland-Lithuania In the 17th century, there were many significant Jewish populations in Western Europe. 
The relatively tolerant Poland had the largest Jewish population in Europe that dated back to 13th century and enjoyed relative prosperity and freedom for nearly 400 years. However, the calm situation there ended when Polish and Lithuanian Jews were slaughtered in the hundreds of thousands by the Cossacks during Chmielniki Uprising 1648 and by the Swedish Wars 1655. Driven by these and other persecutions, Jews moved back to Western Europe in the 17th century. The last ban on Jews by the English was revoked in 1654, but periodic expulsions from individual cities still occurred, and Jews were often restricted from land ownership, or forced to live in ghettos. With the partition of Poland in the late 18th century, the Jewish population was split between the Russian Empire, Austro-Hungary, and Prussia, which divided Poland for themselves. The European Enlightenment and Haskalah 18th century. Topic. During the period of the European Renaissance and Enlightenment, significant changes occurred within the Jewish community. The Haskalah movement paralleled the wider Enlightenment, as Jews in the 18th century began to campaign for emancipation from restrictive laws and integration into the wider European society. Secular and scientific education was added to the traditional religious instruction received by students, and interest in a national Jewish identity, including a revival in the study of Jewish history and Hebrew, started to grow. Haskalah gave birth to the Reform and Conservative movements and planted the seeds of Zionism while at the same time encouraging cultural assimilation into the countries in which Jews resided. At around the same time another movement was born, one preaching almost the opposite of Haskalah, Hasidic Judaism. Hasidic Judaism began in the 18th century by Rabbi Israel Baal Shem Tov, and quickly gained a following with its more exuberant, mystical approach to religion. These two movements, and the traditional Orthodox approach to Judaism from which they spring, formed the basis for the modern divisions within Jewish observance. At the same time, the outside world was changing, and debates began over the potential emancipation of the Jews granting them equal rights. The first country to do so was France, during the French Revolution in 1789. Even so, Jews were expected to integrate, not continue their traditions. This ambivalence is demonstrated in the famous speech of Clermont Tonnerre before the National Assembly in 1789. We must refuse everything to the Jews as a nation and accord everything to Jews as individuals. We must withdraw recognition from their judges, they should only have our judges. We must refuse legal protection to the maintenance of the so-called laws of their Judaic organization, they should not be allowed to form in the state either a political body or an order. They must be citizens individually. But, some will say to me, they do not want to be citizens. Well then, if they do not want to be citizens, they should say so, and then, we should banish them. It is repugnant to have in the state an association of non-citizens, and a nation within the nation. Hasidic Judaism Topic. Hasidic Judaism is a branch of Orthodox Judaism that promotes spirituality and joy through the popularization and internalization of Jewish mysticism as the fundamental aspects of the Jewish faith. Hasidism comprises part of contemporary ultra-Orthodox Judaism, alongside the previous Talmudic Lithuanian yeshiva approach and the Oriental Sephardi tradition. It was founded in 18th century Eastern Europe by Rabbi Israel Baal Shem Tov as a reaction against overly legalistic Judaism. Opposite to this, Hasidic teachings cherished the sincerity and concealed holiness of the unlettered common folk, and their equality with the scholarly elite. The emphasis on the immanent divine presence in everything gave new value to prayer and deeds of kindness, alongside rabbinic supremacy of study, and replaced historical mystical Kabbalistic and ethical Musar asceticism and admonishment with optimism, encouragement, and daily fervor. This populist emotional revival accompanied the elite ideal of nullification to paradoxical divine panentheism, through intellectual articulation of inner dimensions of mystical thought. The adjustment of Jewish values sought to add to required standards of ritual observance, while relaxing others where inspiration predominated. Its communal gatherings celebrate soulful song and storytelling as forms of mystical devotion. 19th century Though persecution still existed, emancipation spread throughout Europe in the 19th century. 
Napoleon invited Jews to leave the Jewish ghettos in Europe and seek refuge in the newly created tolerant political regimes that offered equality under Napoleonic law see Napoleon and the Jews. By 1871, with Germany's emancipation of Jews, every European country except Russia had emancipated its Jews. Despite increasing integration of the Jews with secular society, a new form of antisemitism emerged, based on the ideas of race and nationhood rather than the religious hatred of the Middle Ages. This form of antisemitism held that Jews were a separate and inferior race from the Aryan people of Western Europe, and led to the emergence of political parties in France, Germany, and Austria-Hungary that campaigned on a platform of rolling back emancipation. This form of antisemitism emerged frequently in European culture, most famously in the Dreyfus trial in France. These persecutions, along with state-sponsored pogroms in Russia in the late 19th century, led a number of Jews to believe that they would only be safe in their own nation. See Theodor Herzl and History of Zionism. During this period, Jewish migration to the United States see American Jews created a large new community mostly freed of the restrictions of Europe. Over two million Jews arrived in the United States between 1890 and 1924, most from Russia and Eastern Europe. A similar case occurred in the southern tip of the continent, specifically in the countries of Argentina and Uruguay. 20th century Modern Zionism During the 1870s and 1880s the Jewish population in Europe began to more actively discuss immigration back to Israel and the re-establishment of the Jewish nation in its national homeland, fulfilling the biblical prophecies relating to Shivat Zion. In 1882 the first Zionist settlement—Rishon Letzion—was founded by immigrants who belonged to the Hovive Zion movement. Later on, the Bilu movement established many other settlements in the land of Israel. The Zionist movement was founded officially after the Katowice Convention 1884 and the World Zionist Congress 1897, and it was Theodor Herzl who began the struggle to establish a state for the Jews. After the First World War, it seemed that the conditions to establish such a state had arrived, the United Kingdom captured Palestine from the Ottoman Empire, and the Jews received the promise of a national home from the British in the form of the Balfour Declaration of 1917, given to Chaim Wiseman. In 1920 the British Mandate of Palestine began and the pro-Jewish Herbert Samuel was appointed High Commissioner in Palestine, the Hebrew University of Jerusalem was established and several big Jewish immigration waves to Palestine occurred. The Arab co-inhabitants of Palestine were hostile to increasing Jewish immigration however, and began to oppose Jewish settlement and the pro-Jewish policy of the British government by violent means. Arab gangs began performing violent acts and murders on convoys and on the Jewish population. After the 1920 Arab riots and 1921 Jaffa riots, the Jewish leadership in Palestine believed that the British had no desire to confront local Arab gangs over their attacks on Palestinian Jews. Believing that they could not rely on the British administration for protection from these gangs, the Jewish leadership created the Haganah organization to protect their farms and kibbutzim. Major riots occurred during the 1929 Palestine riots and the 1936-1939 Arab revolt in Palestine. Due to the increasing violence the United Kingdom gradually started to backtrack from the original idea of a Jewish state and to speculate on a binational solution or an Arab state that would have a Jewish minority. Meanwhile, the Jews of Europe and the United States gained success in the fields of the science, culture and the economy. Among those generally considered the most famous were scientist Albert Einstein and philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein. A disproportionate number of Nobel Prize winners at this time were Jewish, as is still the case. In Russia, many Jews were involved in the October Revolution and belonged to the Communist Party. The Holocaust in 1933, with the rise to power of Adolf Hitler and the Nazi Party in Germany, the Jewish situation became more severe. Economic crises, racial anti-Semitic laws, and a fear of an upcoming war led many Jews to flee from Europe to Palestine, to the United States and to the Soviet Union. 
In 1939 World War II began and until 1941 Hitler occupied almost all of Europe, including Poland—where millions of Jews were living at that time—and France. In 1941, following the invasion of the Soviet Union, the final solution began, an extensive organized operation on an unprecedented scale, aimed at the annihilation of the Jewish people, and resulting in the persecution and murder of Jews in political Europe, inclusive of European North Africa pro-Nazi Vichy North Africa and Italian Libya. This genocide, in which approximately six million Jews were murdered methodically and with horrifying cruelty, is known as the Holocaust or Shoah Hebrew term. In Poland, more than one million Jews were murdered in gas chambers at the Auschwitz concentration camp alone. The massive scale of the Holocaust, and the horrors that happened during it, heavily affected the Jewish nation and world public opinion, which only understood the dimensions of the Holocaust after the war. Efforts were then increased to establish a Jewish state in Palestine. The establishment of the State of Israel Topic. In 1945 the Jewish resistance organizations in Palestine unified and established the Jewish resistance movement. The movement began attacking the British authority. Following the King David Hotel bombing, Chaim Wiseman, president of the WZO appealed to the movement to cease all further military activity until a decision would be reached by the Jewish agency. The Jewish agency backed Wiseman's recommendation to cease activities, a decision reluctantly accepted by the Haganah, but not by the Irgun and the Lehi. The JRM was dismantled and each of the founding groups continued operating according to their own policy. The Jewish leadership decided to center the struggle in the illegal immigration to Palestine and began organizing massive amount of Jewish war refugees from Europe, without the approval of the British authorities. This immigration contributed a great deal to the Jewish settlements in Israel in the world public opinion and the British authorities decided to let the United Nations decide upon the fate of Palestine. On November 29, 1947, the United Nations General Assembly adopted Resolution 181 recommending partitioning Palestine into an Arab state, a Jewish state and the city of Jerusalem. The Jewish leadership accepted the decision but the Arab League and the leadership of Palestinian Arabs opposed it. Following a period of civil war the 1948 Arab-Israeli War started, in the middle of the war, after the last soldiers of the British Mandate left Palestine, David Ben-Gurion proclaimed on May 14, 1948, the establishment of a Jewish state in Eretz Israel to be known as the State of Israel. In 1949 the war ended and the State of Israel started building the state and absorbing massive waves of hundreds of thousands of Jews from all over the world. Since 1948, Israel has been involved in a series of major military conflicts, including the 1956 Suez Crisis, 1967 Six-Day War, 1973 Yom Kippur War, 1982 Lebanon War, and 2006 Lebanon War, as well as a nearly constant series of ongoing minor conflicts. Since 1977, an ongoing and largely unsuccessful series of diplomatic efforts have been initiated by Israel, Palestinian organizations, their neighbors, and other parties, including the United States and the European Union, to bring about a peace process to resolve conflicts between Israel and its neighbors, mostly over the fate of the Palestinian people. 21st century Israel is a parliamentary democracy with a population of over 8 million people, of whom about 6 million are Jewish. The largest Jewish communities are in Israel and the United States, with major communities in France, Argentina, Russia, England, and Canada. For statistics related to modern Jewish demographics see Jewish population. The Jewish Autonomous Oblast, created during the Soviet period, continues to be an autonomous oblast of the Russian state. The chief rabbi of Borobidzon, Mordecai Shiner, says there are 4,000 Jews in the capital city. Governor Nikolai Mikhailovich Volkov has stated that he intends to support every valuable initiative maintained by our local Jewish organizations. The Borobidzon synagogue opened in 2004 on the 70th anniversary of the region's founding in 1934. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Jewish history by country or region. Topic. For historical and contemporary Jewish populations by country, see Jews by country. 
History of the Jews in Austria History of the Jews in Belarus History of the Jews in Central Asia History of the Jews in the Czech Republic History of the Jews in France History of the Jews in Germany History of the Jews in India History of the Jews in the Land of Israel History of the Jews in Latin America and the Caribbean History of the Jews under Muslim rule History of the Jews in Poland History of the Jews in Romania History of the Jews in Russia History of the Jews in the Soviet Union History of the Jews in Serbia History of the Jews in Ukraine History of the Jews in the United Kingdom History of the Jews in England History of the Jews in Scotland Resettlement of the Jews in England History of the Jews in the United States American Jews History of the Jews in New York Topic. See also Topic. Topic. Notes Topic. Topic. Further reading Topic. Allegro, John. The Chosen People, A Study of Jewish History from the Time of the Exile until the Revolt of Bar Kochiba Andrews UK Limited, 2015. Botticini, Maristella, and Zvi Eckstein. The Chosen Few, How Education Shaped Jewish History, 70-1492 Princeton University Press, 2012. Kohn Scherbach, Dan. Atlas of Jewish History Routledge, 2013. Cobrin, Rebecca and Adam Teller, eds. Purchasing Power, The Economics of Modern Jewish History, University of Pennsylvania Press, 2015. V. 355 pp. Essays by scholars focused on Europe. Neusner, Jacob A Short History of Judaism. Fortress Press. Satcher, Howard M. The Course of Modern Jewish History Vintage, 2013. Schloss, Chaim. 2000 Years of Jewish History 2002, Heavily Illustrated Popular History. Wiener, Miriam, Polish State Archives in cooperation with 1997. Jewish Roots in Poland, Pages from the Past and Archival Inventories. Sakakis, N.J., Miriam Wiener Roots to Roots Foundation. ISBN 978-0-96-565080-9. OCLC 38756480. Wiener, Miriam, Ukrainian State Archives in cooperation with, Moldovan National Archives in cooperation with, 1999. Jewish Roots in Ukraine and Moldova, Pages from the Past and Archival Inventories. Sakakis, N.J., Miriam Wiener Roots to Roots Foundation. ISBN 978-0-96-565081-6. OCLC 607,423,469 Topic External links Topic The Jewish History Resource Center Project of the Dinner Center for Research in Jewish History The Hebrew University of Jerusalem the State of Israel The Jewish History Resource Center, Project of the Dinner Center for Research in Jewish History, The Hebrew University of Jerusalem Jewish Virtual Library. Extremely Comprehensive Jewish History and Culture Encyclopedia Official site of the 22-volume Encyclopedia Judaica Internet Jewish History Sourcebook offering homework help and online texts Israelite Religion to Judaism, The Evolution of the Religion of Israel Greek influence on Judaism from the Hellenistic period through the Middle Ages c. 300 BCE to 1200 CE. Jewish sects of the Second Temple period. The origin and nature of the Samaritans and their relationship to Second Temple Jewish sects. Jewish history tables. Articles on Australian Jewish history. Articles on British Jewish history. Barnavi, Eli ed. A Historical Atlas of the Jewish People. New York, Alfred A. Knopf, Inc. 1992.
ISBN 978-0-679-40332-6 Crash Course in Jewish History JewishHistoryChabad.org Jewish Families in Sisko Sikov Slovakia until the Holocaust. Under the Influence, Hellenism in Ancient Jewish Life. Biblical Archaeology Society Summary of Jewish History by Beryl Wien. The Jews of Wyoming, Fringe of the Diaspora. ISBN 978-0-9676357-0-5 by Penny Wolin, 2000 Ancient Hebrew History Videos of Jewish History Lectures by Dr. Henry Abramson of Touro College South